Okay, so my name's Nick Whitelug. Uh, I just a quick uh, bio, very quick. I uh, teach uh, Android development and web development at Solent University, which is in Southampton in the south of England. And I'm also a very long-term OpenStreetMap contributor. I've been with the project since 2005, I think, and uh, very passionate about free and open source software. So today I'm going to talk about my project, uh, HiCar, which is all about augmented reality for walkers and hikers. Okay, just a quick, uh, just a very quick background on the uh, different types of augmented reality we have. So I'm sure you all know what AR is by now. Basically, the augmentation of um, the camera feed on a mobile device, such as uh, a phone or a tablet, with computer-generated data. So probably something like Pokemon Go is the most mass market example. Now, there are variants of AR. I'm not going to talk about these in any great detail because they're not really on topic. But we have marker-based AR. And that, is, that basically uses computer vision algorithms to draw 3D computer models on paper markers. And a very good example of that is uh, augmented reality chess, where you've got a chess board with chess pieces, and computer vision then detects the uh, real chess pieces and draws uh, computer-generated um, models of chess pieces, and also obviously can then work out how the chess game is being played and whether anyone's won yet. Uh, we also have markerless AR which is, again, all about using computer vision algorithms to detect things like planes, uh, planes on the ground, like a, uh, obviously a floor or a piece of grass or something like that. And that's been put to use through various AR apps, such as uh, IKEA have done one, basically where you can model a piece of furniture being placed in your uh, living room and see what it likes, see what it looks like. Uh, but we're going to focus on geographic AR, and that's all about uh, using your GPS location and the sensors on your device, so the, uh, the compass, the accelerometer, and so on, to uh, develop an AR app. OK, so what is the state of geographic AR? Well, quite a lot of work's been done on it. Uh, there are a lot of what I call points of interest AR apps where you can, for example, point your phone at a building, like a famous building, like, uh, you know, let's say the EU Parliament or the, some of the buildings on the Grand Place, to think of some local examples. And the AR app will give you some information about that building. So uh, there are a lot of apps out there that will do that. Wikitude is one of the earlier ones. Uh, AR Nav is another one. Um, another, another take on AR is Show Me Hills, which is quite a nice app which shows you, uh, basically, you point to uh, a view from the top of a mountain, and it will actually tell you what the various other hills and mountains you can see are. So there's quite a lot of work out there, but a lot of it's closed source and proprietary, so that's not so good. I do get the impression that while there's a lot of work on AR at the moment, most of it is probably proprietary and closed source, which is not so good. Uh, Show Me Hills is an honourable exception there. Uh, that is GPL. OK, but one uh, little explored area of AR, which is what I'm going to talk about, is all about countryside navigation. So all about walkers and hikers, potentially cyclists as well, perhaps, uh, where basically you can use your phone or your tablet to navigate through the countryside. So uh, I don't know what, what your experience of navigating the countryside is, but I often find in in the UK, where signposting isn't always that good and some of the landowners aren't very friendly, sometimes you're walking across a field uh, or some woods, and it's very unclear where the path goes. In some parts, uh, the signposting is good. In other parts, it's terrible. So it would be nice to actually have an augmented reality app where uh, basically the course of the footpath, uh, the route of the footpath, is overlaid on the camera feed of the phone. And furthermore, it would be even nicer if we could have virtual signposts. So where there are no real signposts, we can instead have a virtual signpost showing you the direction and the distance to nearby points of interest, whether that be hills, mountains, pubs, towns, railway stations, or whatever. And my project, High Car, is aiming to do precisely this. OK, before I start talking about the project in depth, here are a few screenshots. So there are four screenshots here with basically uh, the latest version or 
an iteration of the latest version that was in the autumn. So these are from the autumn, as you can probably tell from the state of the nature. Uh, so you can see that three of these actually show these virtual signposts. So uh, the top left one, for example, um, now Craig's probably going to tell me off for getting the pronunciation horribly wrong. These are in Northern Ireland. Uh, Sleeve Donard is the highest peak in Northern Ireland. So it's telling you that it's 3.79 kilometres that way. So I actually use this, I actually use my app to, uh, I actually used Hikar to navigate to the top of Sleeve Donard, which I'd never actually visited before. So it's telling me it's 3.79 kilometres on the left, and then another uh, peak, which I'll probably get the pronunciation horribly wrong, Sleeve Commodore. Okay, that's good. Uh, 4.03 kilometres that way. Um, the one on the top right, it doesn't show any signposts, but it does show you, and it gives you a hint of some of the issues of the app, namely that the placement is pretty good, but it's not perfect, unfortunately, just yet. I will return to that later. So you can see there is a real path there, hopefully, that sort of dirt path, and then that sort of cyan uh, line is the open street map, because this is all from open street map, as I'll explain in a minute, the open street map way correspond to that path. So it's a bit off, but it's probably good enough to, to navigate with. Uh, bottom uh, left is almost at the top of Sleeve Donard, so it's another example of a virtual signpost. Uh, and the bottom right is in Newcastle, which is the town below Sleeve Donard. So that just gives you an idea of what it looks like at the moment and the sort of information that is shown. Okay, so we're now going to start uh, covering a bit more in terms of the technical detail of how it was implemented. So it's Android, it's Android only, I do want to make that clear at this point. It is not available on iOS just yet, uh, but again I'll return to that later. Uh, so just to give you an idea of some of the APIs that it uses, some of the Android APIs it uses. So a lot of them are really standard Android APIs. Uh, it used a limited amount of third-party APIs, but mostly it's just standard Android. Uh, so the Camera 2 API for uh, basically getting the camera feed off the camera device. Uh, the Location API for getting your GPS position. The Sensor API for detecting the orientation of the device, which is critical. So are you facing north, south, east or west? And also, how is the device oriented? Is it... Um, standing straight or is it at a bit at a tilt so the sensor api basically gives you a rotation matrix that represents the current orientation of the device uh, in relation to the default and that then that leads on to the rendering because that orientation matrix can then be used directly uh, with a slight uh, transformation because we're working in landscape mode uh, in opengl so we use opengl es to do the rendering. Um, so the data, as I've already indicated, is from OpenStreetMap. So obviously this is an open source project, so OpenStreetMap is what it's got to use. And obviously I'm an OSM member, uh, community member anyway, so that all makes sense. So that data is all from OpenStreetMap. And also some freely available elevation data, so that is pretty critical because obviously if you're walking in the hills, you want your routes, you want your paths to be superimposed accurately on the hills without appearing to burrow into them uh, or appearing way above you or way below you. So elevation is critical. OK, uh, and that's really what I just talked about. I've already gone through that slide, I think. I will talk about the elevation data sources in a minute. So where do we get this elevation data from? Uh, there are a number of places I've used uh, before settling on a final um, uh, source, but I will talk about those elevation data sources subsequently. Uh, so basically, just to clarify that, the, uh, the rendered data, the rendered uh, footpaths that you see, have got to be in 3D, because if we didn't uh, have a Z coordinate, then let's say we were at, uh, say, 300 metres above sea level. If all the Z coordinates were at zero, then the data would, wouldn't be at your level. It would appear to be sort of way down there and, and look, look, look very small and very distant. Likewise, if, if the Z-coordinate was always 1,000 metres, let's say, uh, in most places it would be hovering above you like that. 
Okay, and then that's what I'm aiming to do. It obviously doesn't look quite look that nice just yet, but in an ideal world, once I've, you know, once I've got a bit further with it, that's the sort of effect I'd like to have. It's not that good yet. Uh, that's more a desired end product in terms of uh, showing you the route up mountains. Okay, so a bit of sort of history, because what I'm talking about today is not the first version of High Car. Uh, it's a project that's been around for about five years now. Um, I've been developing it on and off, as you often do with open source development. You know, I do have a uh, day job as well, which is very demanding. So um, I work on this. It is now research for my day job, so I am allowed to do it at work when I'm not busy with other things. But obviously, um, you know, I worked on it for quite a bit. Then uh, I sort of uh, stopped working on it for a while. But then because AR has become quite, uh, you know, has had quite a lot of interest in the last couple of years, uh, I've started developing it uh, regularly once again. And I'm quite passionate about keeping that development going. So it was originally developed in 2013. And the original version, and I do want to uh, emphasize the original version, is on Google Play. It will not show signposts. It's the original old version, uh, but it is there if you want to see the older one. Uh, and the elevation sources that the original version used included um, Ordnance Survey, which is the UK's national mapping agency, Open Data, and also NASA SRTM, which probably you all know about, I would have thought. OK. Uh, so, how do I prepare the data? So, it does not talk to OpenStreetMap directly. Obviously, the main OpenStreetMap servers are aimed at editing, not consumption of data. So, it's basically using a very standard tool chain, really, uh, using Osmosis, first of all. So, I download data from Geofabrik in Germany, so the Geofabrik site by Jochen Topf and uh, Frederick Ram. So I, I download country extracts from there. I then run it through Osmosis, uh, the OSM filtering tool, to select only uh, the things I'm interested in, namely roads, footpaths, and a um, small subset of points of interest. Uh, and then I import into a PostGIS database. So again, it's the standard uh, tool chain, really, using OSM2 PGSQL. So the PostGIS database on my server is the standard one that you would also use for MapNIC rendering. Uh, and then I've written my own PHP-based web API to serve the data. Uh, so basically, that's running on my own server. So you, you send it a query, and then it returns the data back as GeoJSON. Uh, and then uh, that data is then cached on the device so that once you've downloaded data for a particular area, uh, you don't need internet connection again. Right, now, this is uh, what I'd say the number one issue with the app at the moment, and that's the availability of data. And this is where, if I could get either volunteers or people who can direct me at suitable um, sort of uh, hosting providers or storage, that would be great. My own server is something I pay for out of my own pocket. Uh, I pay 20-odd pounds for it per month. And due to the constraints of the server, it only covers certain parts of Europe, unfortunately. So uh, that is Britain, Ireland, and Greece. Uh, reason why, why, it is, why I've got Greece in there is that I regularly go to Greece for personal reasons. So uh, that's why I've chosen those three countries. Uh, I am, I'm very much not a Brexiteer, so I very much like it to be uh, the whole of Europe. Uh, that would be great. Um, but unfortunately, my, I don't have the money to pay for the hosting to cover the whole of Europe, unfortunately. So if anyone can uh, let me know, and I'll give you my contact details later, any affordable hosting uh, providers for, for that, that would be great. Uh, or even if anyone has got any spare servers lying around that I could possibly use if you're particularly interested in this project. OK, so uh, what I'm looking for in terms of somewhere to host it, really, is just uh, somewhere OSM PostGIS database uh, only needs to store highways and selected points of interest. And uh, my, my API uses PHP, so, so that, that's what would be needed. 
or if anyone knows of any existing APIs that someone else has written where I can get GeoJSON data of OSM. Okay, uh, so that, uh, that's a bit about my own web API, just getting the Git, GitLab uh, link. So I am on GitLab rather than GitHub. Uh, I think I was a little worried about Microsoft taking over there, but, but just a personal thing. But um, yeah, uh, bear in mind all my source code is on GitLab, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, so basically, the web service, the API now takes XYZ format, so the standard XYZ tiles. So you send a request specifying X, Y, and Z, just the standard Google Maps, the OpenStreetMap, everything else style, X, Y, Z, Web Mercator sort of thing. And then it returns GeoJSON in the 3857 Web Mercator projection. So that, that's, that's what the API does. Uh, in terms of terrain, uh, basically uh, I'm now using the MapZen terrain tiles. So one of the... Uh, X map Zen employees let me know about that. So terrain, elevation is not a problem at all. I've got that access to that globally. Uh, so basically it's now provided as a free Amazon uh, AWS uh, service. So that's where I get the data from, uh, the elevation data. And it's in the terrarium or terrarium ping format where elevation data is encoded in the RGB channels of the ping image. Uh, so that's, that's where I get my terrain from now, following uh, a few earlier sort of uh, solutions, which I've now abandoned. Uh, so I'm all good with that. So basically, it was something that MapZen made, and then they put on a free Amazon cloud sort of service. So that's all good. Right, a bit now on, on, on the virtual signpost, because that's the really new um, thing that I've added, as you can see from the screenshots. And I would like to give credit here, because... I am not a 3D modeler. Those signpost models that you saw were generated by my colleague in the sort of computer games and animation group at my university, Neil Brewis. So many, many, many thanks to him for doing those. So how is this actually done? Well, this actually follows on fairly nicely from the previous talk, uh, but on Graph Upper. I generate a graph. Now, I did actually use Graph Hopper for a while, but I had to go through a because Graph Hopper uses OSM as its input source. I had to go through a, a, a rather laborious manual procedure to generate static graphs. Whereas what I really want to generate is graphs on the fly to reduce the maintenance uh, needed. So what I now do is I take the GeoJSON, the same GeoJSON used to render the data, and from that I generate a graph. So what I do, similar, I'd imagine, to what Peter's doing, I find the junction nodes, so I work out where there are junctions, and then each junction node then becomes um, basically a vertex on the graph. Um, and then obviously the edges of the graph become the links between the nodes. Uh, and for routing, it's for basically for graph uh, management, I use another open source library called JGraphT, uh, that's basically a, a, an open source library which allows you to efficiently store a graph. And it also comes with uh, implementations of uh, Dijkstra and A star, so I can do my actual routing using JGraph T. So that's just a quick diagram. So the things in black are, is the underlying OpenStreetMap network. The blue is the structure of the graph. So you can see that the graph is a simplified version of the network where each uh, vertex on the graph corresponds to a junction uh, node in OSM. And then my edges store the distance, the actual geographic distance between the nodes, uh, between the vertices. And that distance is the full distance along the OSM way, obviously not the as the crow flies distance between the two um, vertices. Then I do my junction detection. So what I do is uh, when I get a GPS position, when I get a new GPS position, I then look at the graph and see if there is a graph vertex within a certain distance. I think it's 10 meters, if I remember right. A certain distance of my current GPS position. Uh, JGraphT T does actually have a number of useful API calls to do that, so that's relatively easy. Uh, and then... 
if I am at a junction, what I do is I calculate the bearing, uh, basically the azimuth, the bearing, of each way radiating from the junction, each edge radiating from the junction, uh, and I use that to place my signpost arms. Now, what I do there is I filter the edges because my signposts only show footpaths, so I check that each edge, because each edge basically contains all the various OSM tags associating with that way, uh, associated with that way, I filter the list of edges so that I only take those which actually represent footpaths. So things like highway equals footway, highway equals track, etc., etc., and access not private. So I select those ways which are potentially walking routes. OK, and then having done that, what I then do is I find out, I basically work out, uh, I search for points of interest within five kilometres of my current position. So that gives me a list of points of interest, and then I use JGraph T to route to each point of interest. And once I've got the route, I then basically uh, compare the bearing of the first segment of the route with the bearing of each uh, OSM way heading from that junction. So, for example, if uh, the route to, let's say, I don't know, uh, the Grand Place, let's say, was 270 degrees, not sure exactly what it is, 270 degrees, and one of my ways from my current point was at 270 degrees, then I would know that the route to the Grand Place would be along that way. So basically, I add that point of interest to that way, and then it, the arm, the signpost arm pointing along that way, will then contain Grand Place. OK, so that's basically like that. So we've got a graph here. POIA is there. POIB is there. POIC is there. So basically, by comparing the bearings, we can work out that POIA and POIB are along that signpost arm, and POIC is there. Right, a uh, bit, bit on weighting. Uh, different points of interest types get different weightings. So places are weighted heaviest, followed by hills, railway stations and hamlets, pubs and cafes, and then lastly, localities. Um, they're, they're ballpark figures at the moment, really what I consider the most important things when out walking. It's not extensively tested, so those figures probably need a bit more refining. So basically, uh, the higher something's weighted, the more likely it is to appear on a signpost arm. So I only take the uh, lowest weighted, essentially, two points of interest along a particular route and add those two to that arm. OK, um, a bit of an enhancement would be exact routing to a point of interest because it may be a point of interest is not at a junction node. In other words, it's not at a uh, vertex on the graph. So in those cases, what I do is I first of all route to the nearest junction node, as you can see there, and then I walk along each OSM way leading from that junction node, and then if I find a node along that OSM way which is closer to the point of interest than the junction node, I essentially add the route from the junction to the node nearest the point of interest to my route, because that is a potential problem. Points of interest might not be at a junction node. Uh, signpost rendering, that's all done with OpenGL. Uh, the, uh, the actual um, letters, the characters are done using an OpenGL texture. And an interesting point is that I do support uh, Greek and Cyrillic character sets as well. So if you used in Greece, uh, it, it will work, because obviously my data covers Greece, uh, so it does support Greek character sets. And if someone wanted to, say, set up data for, say, Bulgaria or um, uh, Serbia, let's say, then it would work there as well. OK, remaining issues, uh, battery life. It's always a big thing in AR apps. Battery life is, uh, often sucks the battery. Inaccuracies in obtaining GPS position. Uh, holding the device steady, so AR glasses is uh, possibly the future, maybe. Um, when's the next talk, by the way? Is it 30 or 35? 30. So you have OK, fine. Nine minutes. 
Okay, fine. Right, so um, holding the device steady uh, is another thing. So AR glasses are an interesting new, um, in, you know, new development in technology where obviously you can wear glasses like that. Google Glass was an early, somewhat failed experiment, uh, but there are newer models out there as well. They still all look a bit sort of sci-fi, but nonetheless I can see possibly in the future where we can get AR glasses that just look like regular glasses, then that might be the best device to actually do this sort of augmented reality because you don't have to hold your phone steady. Uh, the other issue, as you probably saw from the screenshots, is that the computer-generated objects float a bit, uh, which might look a little bit unrealistic. It would be nice, uh, a future plan would be to use computer vision algorithms, such as using OpenCV, for example, to actually overlay those on the um, ground more accurately. So yeah, that's the state of play. 0.1, as I said, is the old version. 0.2 is what's being presented today. It's available on GitLab under that URL. Okay. Uh, it's working, but I'd say it needs a bit more further testing. So I haven't put it on Google Play just yet. I do want to test it a bit more before I do that. There is, however, an APK available, which I'll, I'll leave open at the end. And 0.3 is a planned future version which will explore computer vision, for example, using OpenCV maybe, to more accurately place the paths and the signposts. Hi, Carl Lib. I haven't I've run out of time a bit, but my, my plan is really to make uh, a lot of this code a bit more generic. So rather than just focusing on uh, walking, focusing on any open source application of AR, because I think at the moment a lot of the solutions out there are proprietary. That is a big problem. So I think I would like to start this High Car Lib project where I try and make the code a bit more generic so it could be used in other use cases such as city guides, virtual tours of historical sites and so on and so forth. Um, so interested in contributing. Uh, obviously a successful open source project really needs more than one contributor, I think. So who am I particularly after? Anyone with experience in OpenCV and computer vision, I think, would be really great to have. Uh, any form of AR development experience, you know, just sharing experiences, sharing knowledge, particularly, you know, making efficient use of the battery. Uh, volunteers, if, if there are any volunteers who could help host the web service and increase coverage, because I want to cover certainly the whole of Europe as a starting point, uh, you know, the world at one point, but Europe would be great. Uh, and then the other uh, possible contributor is an uh, iOS developer, because obviously it's Android only. It'd be great to get it working on iOS as well. Uh, where? Well, the source code is on GitLab. Uh, so gitlab.com slash nickw1 slash highcar. That's the source code. Uh, I've got a preview APK for downloading. That will work on Android 6 upwards. Uh, so if you are in the UK, Ireland, or Greece, uh, and you want to test it, feel free to use the APK. And as I said, the old version's on Google Play. Right, OK, thanks. So that is uh, it. So there are my contact details. I'm a bit of a newcomer to Twitter, so there's not a lot on there at the moment, but I am intending to use it a lot more to keep you all up to date with <coughs> updates. OK. Thanks. There are about two minutes left for questions. Anybody has a question? I have one. Very quick. Uh, what's the size of your current database, and if you have an estimation of how large will it be to cover the whole Europe? Uh, I don't have an estimation at the moment, but I, I could uh, probably work that out. Why, why do you ask? Yes, okay, fine. How much uh, storage? Okay, um, if you give me your contact details, I'll try and work that out and I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, yeah? Could you add audio for the blind so it makes a noise when you're facing towards the path? Um, and perhaps reads out the signpost? Uh, that would, uh, that's a good idea, yes. It, um, I'm sure I could do that, yes. Um, I'm sure that would be possible, yeah. The gentleman at the back. Uh, 
Probably OpenStreetMap, really. In terms of points of interest, OpenStreetMap is really the main, the main source. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you go first. Okay. So, are you thinking uh, like expanders and including Glamming as part as well? Because when you are Glamming multi tool groups, yeah. you have to navigate to the rock, and if you get lost, you need to upstate. Yes. Online, and you might die. That I, 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 yeah, I'm not planning to do that myself, but I do have a colleague who's actually interested in using AR for climbing routes. So, uh, yeah, that would be a, that's a great idea. Yeah.